There we go. <laughs> yep. Three, two, one. Oops. <laughs> And good evening from Philadelphia. Frank here with a a special uh, quarantine Wednesday night edition of UFO News Network Sunday. Uh, We're all set to go. My usual co-host, Chant Hannah, is on assignment tonight, so she won't be with us. But with us tonight is uh, a special guest, uh, Stefan Versteppen, uh, author of uh, several books, uh, uh, has uh, a lot of uh, perspectives on uh, China and dealing with China as a journey to Asia, uh, written a number of books on uh, China. Chinese philosophy and uh, doing uh, business with China and uh, so on and so forth, uh, along with uh, protecting yourself uh, uh, in terms of uh, urban survival, the art of urban survival is one of the other books that he's written. So uh, uh, we're not going to be dealing too much with the UFO stuff, but uh, I think uh, Stefan's perspectives are important enough to uh, uh, break from the usual format and uh, do something a little bit different. And uh, I'm uh, really curious. I've been a fan of his for a few years now, and I'm really curious about uh, uh, what uh, some of his perspectives are on all this, uh, what's going on in the world today. So, uh, uh, Stefan Verstappen, uh, thanks uh, for, uh, so much for joining us. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, you're quite welcome, Frank. Thanks for having me back on the show. Absolutely, absolutely. We had a, a great time and a lot of good feedback on your appearance. Uh, uh, not quite two years ago now, and here we are, still in business two years later. And uh, it's been a, an interesting ride. And uh, now we're uh, at least uh, on uh, this particular road, coming full circle and having you back. And uh, uh, you've been uh, very interested, uh, traveled throughout China and Asia, and uh, been interested in uh, uh, Chinese philosophy. Of course, the uh, uh, the virus that's uh, very much in the news now, uh, getting a lot of uh, uh, bad PR for China. And I uh, wondered uh, if you could talk a little bit about that. Uh, uh, tell us about how you got interested in uh, uh, Asian and Chinese thinking and uh, about uh, some of your travels over there. Well, I got interested in uh, in China when I started taking uh, Kung Fu. Um, I started off, uh, I was interested in martial arts because, well, I was inspired because I was a member of a Gurchev Ospensky group. And uh, Gurchev, uh, George Ivanovich Gurchev was a very obscure Ar- Armenian, Greek, Russian philosopher at the turn of the century. And... Um, He's a little bit bizarre, you know. There's a great movie and a book called uh, Meetings with Remarkable Men, which got me interested. And uh, in his book, Meetings with Remarkable Men, he mentioned that he was a practitioner of martial arts. So I looked into martial arts as a tool for self-discipline, self-actualization, enlightenment, you know. And that's how I got interested in it. And uh, I started off with karate and taekwondo, but... I eventually went down to Chinatown in Toronto here to uh, two schools. I, I, I trained at two different schools in Chinatown, and uh, I was the only Caucasian in the class there. And uh, I started getting interested in Chinese culture then. You know, after class, we would um, go to the local Chinese restaurants and drink tea and, and um, have some great Chinese food. And, well, after a few years of that, me and my Kung Fu brother decided that uh, we really want to learn from some of the great masters. That's we got to go to Asia. We, can, you know, and Chinatown was good. It was a great club. You know, it's the oldest school here. It's called the Hung Luck Club, and they've been around since the fifties. And a very traditional Chinese Kung Fu club. But uh, you don't get the attention of the master like you would if you go to China. So we <clears throat> went off to China. We spent four years. Uh, living in China at that time, um, I studied in Hong Kong under uh, Master Chan Hong Chong, 
who is well, like oh my, it was a it was a complete f- fluke, Frank, that we met this guy that we got to study with him, because this was in the days before the internet. Uh, I'd have to go to the library and get a Yellow Pages directory of uh, businesses in Hong Kong. Um, printed in English, and I would have to write them letters, you know, and uh, they wrote back, and finally we ended up there in Hong Kong. Unbelievable. One of the most revered martial arts masters in all of China. And then we went to um, Taipei, where uh, I found, again, completely by fluke, another really good kung fu teacher. And then, uh, well, I spent four years there, and then I came back and, you know, lived all over the States and uh, Canada and went back again in uh, in 2000, back to China with uh, a group of venture capitalists. I was hired as a publicist to uh, cover the events, and uh, we opened up the very first uh, China Internet Conference in Beijing in 2000. And then we did a tour of China from you know, Beijing to Shanghai to Shenzhen, a VIP tour. And we met, you know, the mayor of Beijing and we had official state dinners and banquets. And, well, it was quite the eye opener to what was going on there. And since then, I've uh, maintained contact uh, with China. I have friends over there. I talk to them regularly. And I wrote a book after I came back um, called Chinese Business Etiquette, and it you know, talks about all the different types of business strategies the Chinese use. And uh, so that's my history of China. Well, uh, one of the things that uh, you write about in the uh, Business Strategies book is uh, losing face, and uh, it already seems that uh, there's going to be a little bit of a, a groundswell in terms of uh, less dealing with China as a result of this uh, virus outbreak. And uh, wondering uh, what your thoughts are on all that. Yeah, well, that's the worst thing in Chinese culture is to lose face. And they call it diolian. Uh, because their reputation is really important and everything is based on, you know, it goes way back to agrarian society. And agrarian society's mutual reciprocity is very important and being able to trust people is very important. And it goes back to European history, too. That's why Europeans are, are so important. Um, open and uh, forgiving and understanding and willing to cooperate because you needed to. And in order to, uh, you know, uh, work within a society, you had to have a good reputation. So the Chinese have this same obsession, but on steroids, you know, they really, uh, losing faces is a really big deal. And China has lost a lot of face, which is good because China under the communists is an evil empire. The amount of of evil that goes on in that country is incomprehensible. And it's not because of the Chinese people themselves. Um, Although there are differences, I always tell everybody, I I love the Chinese from Taiwan. I like the Chinese from Hong Kong. I don't like the Chinese from mainland China. It's not their fault. It's the natural result of being under a schizophrenic, psychotic, psychopathic political system like communism for 60 years, for no, 80 years. You've got four generations of Chinese born, raised, indoctrinated and manipulated by this evil ideology of communism. And it's literally destroyed their spirit and their soul. And China is just a, uh, a horrible place, uh, full of evil, and it's a totalitarian society. So the sooner we can distance ourselves from the communist Chinese, I mean, I'm all in favor of boycotting everything made in China until that regime fails and the Chinese people are able to create a new political system more on a democratic, more of a... a, a, a uh, a republic democratic system with a constitution and, and voting rights and, and hopefully they can drag themselves out of the, the hell that the communists have, have, have put them in. And uh, it seems like uh, the Asian countries, uh, uh, like uh, you mentioned, uh, Taipei, Taiwan, uh, capital of uh, Taiwan, uh, South Korea, Japan, have been a lot more effective as far as uh, uh, containing uh, this uh, viral outbreak 
And uh, uh, one of the th- uh, the big tools in uh, their arsenal uh, has always been uh, uh, wearing masks. I mean, we've been seeing uh, these viral outbreaks have taken place uh, over that uh, over that way uh, a few times over the last uh, generation or so. And uh, you always see uh, folks over there uh, wearing the masks. And uh, we were very very slow uh, to pick up on that, and uh, it's uh, it's cost a few lives. And uh, I was wondering uh, if you have any thoughts on that. This uh, this willingness to wear masks uh, over there and uh, the reticence of even uh, uh, organizations like the uh, Center for Disease Control here in the States uh, to recommend that people start doing that. That seems like the simplest thing in the world that you can do to uh, protect yourself even a little bit. And it just hasn't been picked up on. And uh, we paid a price for that in the West. Well, the Chinese have been wearing masks for like 30 years. Uh, They were wearing masks in China and in Taiwan and Hong Kong when I was there in the early 80s. Um, And they were wearing masks then because of the air pollution. Um, You know, they they started off with the industrialization and the first thing that happened was horrendous pollution, not just air pollution, but water pollution as well. All their lakes and rivers are absolutely toxic cesspools. You you can't drink from them, you can't swim in them. Uh, And the air pollution was terrible. I rode a motorcycle in uh, Taipei, and uh, you know, you would drive for half an hour, and you take a Kleenex and, and and wipe your forehead, and the Kleenex would be black. And that's how much pollution there was, because uh, at that time there were millions of two-stroke motorcycles, and the uh, the weather patterns of Taipei was a bowl, so it trapped all the pollution, and so everybody was wearing masks, but it was because of the air pollution. Um, now they're wearing the masks for the uh, the uh, the so-called virus, but um, you know, Frank, I don't believe in the virus. I I don't believe a word of it, and um, I don't because listen, everything that we know we can't know. What I mean to say is there is a certain you know, being a stoic and 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 being a warrior, you have to be critical of the information you get. How do we know there is such a thing as a virus? Well, the the Medical Association tells us so. Well, the Medical Association is a corrupt and discredited organization dedicated to profiting from people being sick. Why would I trust them? I mean, we know that the AMA is a monstrosity. Talk to doctors and ask them if they've ever cured anybody. Curing is not in the program for the AMA. The indoctrination that doctors get when they go to medical school is brutal. They are not taught anything of real consequence and value when it comes to human health. Now, there's two points of this. One is trauma. And one is uh, pathology. Now, in terms of trauma, yeah, modern medicine is brilliant. They can, you know, split the leg back up, put in a titanium plate. You know, they can rebuild a hand if it's been crushed. So trauma injuries, modern medicine is, is brilliant. But in pathological uh, uh, diseases, such as cancer or diabetes or arthritis or heart disease, any number of the autoimmune diseases, modern medicine is worse than useless. As a matter of fact, 100,000 people die every year in the United States due to mistakes made at the hospital. So, you know, if you go to the hospital, you're taking your life in your hands because there's a good chance that the hospital and or its procedures and medical technicians or doctors will kill you before whatever you went there with would kill you. So, okay, so the AMA is telling me it's a virus, it's this, it's that. I've heard convincing arguments that there's no such thing as a virus. Now, I can't say whether there is or not because I don't know, but neither does anyone else, right? I don't know, but neither do the doctors know. I don't believe them. I've met enough doctors. They don't know that much. And I don't trust them. I don't trust anybody with a degree just because they have a degree. I've met lots of college professors that were morons that couldn't (laughs) tie their own shoelaces. Well, I'll disagree. Uh, I'll disagree with a little bit of what you're saying here as far as, uh, uh, you know, going to the hospital. I mean, I, I'd have to be near death to want to go to a hospital. That uh, the, the number that you gave, that 100,000 number, uh, that's about how many people uh, – 
whether it's uh, we're talking about the same thing or something different, about 100,000 people every year uh, die from health care related infections or associated it's infections. It's a it's an astonishing number. And yeah. uh, the, the the folks that, uh, you know, were working the hospital, I mean, God bless them, the ones that do a good job. But uh, you're also seeing uh, uh, these areas as sort of uh, centers uh, for a, a lot of the deaths that we're seeing. Now, as far as the virus itself, uh, you know, there, there's no question in my mind that uh, there's something going on not uh, uh I, I don't believe that uh, anyone's capable of uh, uh, faking this sort of thing. And uh, I've also heard uh, the uh, uh, the accounts of people that I know. Uh, basically, uh, the, uh, a couple of them are British, but uh, just their description of going through this. And they're healthy enough; they're going to survive it. But it's a bad it's a bad bug. There's no sure, question yeah. about that in my mind. So uh, they've got that, and uh, uh, some of the descriptions that I've heard. Uh, <clears throat> One fellow uh, who's actually been a guest on this show who's gotten it over in England, and he was uh, he was saying how much he thought his uh, background in scuba diving was very helpful in actually being able to breathe while having this virus, and it gets that bad. Uh, and uh, I thought that was pretty interesting because I've done a little bit of scuba diving myself. And yeah, when you're under the water with that pressure on the outside of your body uh, pressing <laughs> in and uh, trying to breathe uh, with one of those tanks, it's quite different. You have to stay very relaxed and be very focused on your breathing. So I thought that was an interesting uh, uh, analogy. And uh, yeah, the, there's no question in my mind that uh, uh, the bug uh, uh, does exist and it is a bad bug. And uh, my own feeling is, yeah, uh, most of the people who are uh, dying as a result of it. Unfortunately, uh, they they do have uh, some kind of already underlying health issue. But if uh, this bug was the tipping point, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and uh, uh, count those uh, uh, tragic losses uh, among the losses uh, for uh, uh, for this particular bug. So, uh, yeah, there's very little doubt, uh, no doubt in, in my mind that uh, uh, the bug is bad, that you do want to avoid it. And uh, that, that, that gets me to my uh, next line of question which is uh, you've written uh, about uh, defending yourself against the psychopath about the art of urban survival and here we've got uh, uh, this sort of thing that uh, even if you are skeptical about this particular virus uh, uh, the idea of uh, protecting yourself against uh, some unseen communicable disease regardless of what it is is uh, uh, a very uh, very interesting uh, uh, thing because uh, here you are you're not uh, in a situation where it's uh, uh, some uh, big burly thug with a lead pipe that you have to worry about but it could literally be anybody who's uh, uh, coughing or whatever the case may be that can get you sick even if it's just the normal flu season so uh, i was uh, wondering uh, the, the the mindset uh, uh, that you need to have in terms of protecting yourself yourself especially if you already have some sort of uh, underlying condition and any kind of flu or virus could pose a real serious uh, uh, threat to your health this is a, a different kind of self-defense and i was wondering if you uh, have given any thought to that well i've been practicing the social distancing for like 30 years <laughs> haven't we haven't a lot of us <laughs> yeah I, I mean I'm all, I, i've i've never liked big crowds anyways so you won't catch me. You couldn't pay me to, to go to a hockey game or something like that. Uh, or a, a concert. I won't go to a concert or a disco. I, I don't go to those places. I did when I was younger, you know. But, you know, after I turned 40, I'm too old for that crap. <laughs> uh, so, and I've always been careful about touching my face when I'm out in public. Because I know, I'm not worried so much about the virus, but I'm worried about the bacteria. And the bacteria is definitely real, and it's all over the place. And that will give you pneumonia. That will give you a bacterial infection. That will give you, uh, that will make you sick as, uh, uh, like crazy. You know, I'm not doubting that the people that, that say they are sick are sick. Sure, they're sick. What I'm doubting is, is the cause this uh, coronavirus and the fact of the matter is they don't know and they can't know because the, in order to really know what the cause of death is they would have to do a full autopsy and a complete blood work on the cadaver so you know you need a, 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 a forensic expert to examine the body and examine everything, the lungs, the liver, you know, the brain, and do full blood work and eliminate any other possible cause for their death. Now, if they're able to do that, eliminate, you know, diabetes or asthma or, you know, a, a lowered immune system, and the only thing that's left is 
a test for this coronavirus, and they don't have a test for it anyways. All this testing, testing, they, you, it doesn't exist. I, and I, I, you know, I could explain it, but it gets all technical. And I'm not even a doctor. I just I have an understanding of how science works. Science doesn't work that way. Um, it's all bullshit, this test. And then when they attributed these deaths to coronavirus, they are bullshitting. They are lying. And I double-checked this with my doctor friend. I told him, I said, listen, he was an emergency room physician. He's been on the front lines of this corona thing. I said, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. But in order to, to accurately determine the cause of death from a pathology, as opposed to trauma. So, you know, somebody gets shot in the head. Okay, we know the cause of death is he got shot in the head. Yeah, it wasn't, that, it wasn't diabetes. It wasn't diabetes. <laughs> but in order to determine the cause of death from some sort of pathology, some disease, you would need to do a full autopsy and a full blood work, and you'd have to eliminate all the other possible uh, 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 comorbidity, is what they call it. I said... Am I wrong in that? He wrote me a, a two-page essay, and he says, absolutely not. That, yes, in order to, to get a legal uh, definition for the cause of death that would hold up in court. So think back to all these murder mysteries where, you know, the husband poisons the wife or the wife poisons the husband. And, you know, only after they do a, a, a complete autopsy and eliminate all other causes and test specifically for the poison, can they list the cause of death as being this and have that stand up in a legal court of law? So in order to make sure that everybody that that they say died from the coronavirus really did, they would have to do an autopsy on everybody. Right. And, and I, they, I understand um, as, uh, that as, uh, as far as you're going, but I would say that even if it was the tipping point, even if it was the contributing factor, uh, ask yourself, would this person have died if they had not contracted this virus? And if the answer is no, then I would say, yeah, you can you can uh, quite reasonably say that the virus was the cause of, uh, at least uh, in a part, the cause of death. Um, yes or no, because maybe the cause of death was the other lying condition and the coronavirus played no part in it. How do you know? If it was the tipping point, Th they don't know. They can't know this stuff. Uh, the, the variables are too, too great. It's like if they do a study on, on, uh, you know, apples will reduce cancer or cures cancer. Well, you'd have to, you know, do a study of thousands of people and you'd have to see what else they ate. Did they eat, drink coffee? Maybe it was coffee that reduced cancer. Maybe they smoked cigarettes. Maybe that reduced cancer. I mean, you can't eliminate all the variables in a test like that. The same way they can't eliminate all the variables in the cause of death unless they do a full autopsy. And my doctor friend said he researched it and he only found one autopsy conducted in Wuhan and the results are not publicly available. So, but every day we hear, oh, now there are 3,000 people died from corona, and, and over there, 10,000 people. No, they're lying, uh, Frank. They're lying because they can't possibly know that. There's no way they did an autopsy on 300 people every day. Impossible. There's not the personnel to do that in all of the world to do 300 autopsies a day on these people. So when they come out with these statistics, oh, so many people died, so many people died. Look, I don't know what they died from, Frank. I can't say it was a virus or this or that. But what I can guarantee you is they have no goddamn way in hell of telling you that absolutely these people died of coronavirus. So they're lying. And this is what causes me concern. When they're lying like this every day, all day long, and then the hype and uh, you know on the media and the massive overreach of, you know, martial law and dictatorial powers it's madness because they don't know and if they tell you they know they're lying well i wouldn't doubt that uh, some of these have uh, uh, some of the uh, the cases have uh, gotten thrown in there uh, as a result and that yeah, yeah, uh, the, the, yeah there's no uh, there's no uh, uh, question they're not able to autopsy everyone but uh, there's enough to go on that uh, uh, you know i i, I think uh, i think everybody should be cautious about Oh, go ahead. To go on, says who? Where do you get your information from? The media, from the government. Well, uh, so, some of the some Google of the places I'm uh, getting uh, some of the uh, places I'm getting my information from is from actual accounts of people who've had it, 
And uh, they were. Uh, they know. They know they're sick. That doesn't make them an expert in the disease just because you get sick. Frank, you know, all this stuff, it's all secondhand, thirdhand information. Most of it can't be corroborated. And most of it comes from official sources. It comes from the WHO. It comes from the CDC. It comes from the government. Uh, you know, China comes out and says, oh, we have this Wuhan virus. Why would you believe China? They are a lunatic regime. They're, they're a schizophrenic, psychotic regime of m communists. And they say the Wuhan virus originated there. Why would I believe them? Frank, the trouble is, you know, we, we, we're, we're trained to trust. It's what they call the appeal to authority. It's a, a, it's a logical fallacy. So long as somebody in a white coat says it, and they claim to have all these initials after their name, we're supposed to believe it. But the problem is they're not any more qualified. They're not any less likely to make a mistake. They're not any less likely to lie for profit. So, you know, just because China says the Wuhan virus started in their wet market from eating bats, why would I believe China? And just because... Oh, well, why, you know, why, why would they say something like that if it wasn't true? Why would they admit well, look to that? What's happened? They're, yeah, they're lo they're losing a lot of face around the world. Why would they deliberately do that? Well, yeah. they're up and running. The rest of us are on shutdown, right? They are now. Yeah, they are now. And uh, they have all our manufacturing jobs. They've got uh, you know the sort of democles over our heads with if they cut off uh, exports of antibiotics, <laughs> we're going to be screwed over here. People will be dying horrible deaths by the hundreds of thousands. It'll be make the coronavirus look like a, a walk in the park if we can't get the medicines to treat the people here that already need those medicines. So I mean, they've got all the all the balls in their court. They're up and running. They control all the manufacturing. Meanwhile, here in the West, we are facing the worst depression since the 1930s. It's going to be far worse than anything that happened in the 1930s. The this, Already the hundreds of thousands of businesses that are gone and will never come back. They're never coming back. The unemployment, it's going to be, you know, 30, 40 percent. Those jobs are not coming back. Not for the next 10, 20 years. Not unless we have some some fascist dictator, you know, take over and... Uh, and uh, mobilize the entire country to uh, rebuild their infrastructure and their manufacturing capabilities. It's not coming back. We are doomed. Western civilization, it's over. It was nice while it lasted. But it's gone now, Frank. It's not coming back. And China is still in a position where it controls all the manufacturing, all the exports. They're up and running again. And meanwhile, the entire Western world has been destroyed. So I don't know. Why would they lie? Well, I don't think uh, the entire Western world has been destroyed. Uh, when you look at what happened in 1917, uh, we bounced back from that, and that was a lot worse than this is ever going to get. Mm -hmm. if, if you look at uh, the 1917-18 uh, the, the uh, flu pandemic, uh, uh, 500,000 Americans were killed. I know it got up into Canada as well. I don't know what the numbers are there. Sure, but but no, uh, okay. they didn't shut down the entire economy in 1917. Well, they uh, they uh, actually uh, they did uh, shut down uh, quite a lot in terms of businesses, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, public gatherings, in terms of churches, that type of thing. Uh, a lot of the things that were that are happening right now were happening back then. Uh, absolutely, uh, uh, very similar. Uh, the one thing that you didn't have in nineteen uh, uh, seventeen eighteen was a, a wide variety of uh, uh, you know uh, commercial air travel. You really didn't have that. But uh, aside from that, you had trains uh, and uh, and boats, which were uh, the big spreaders of uh, that particular flu uh, pandemic, uh, absolutely without uh, any question. Uh, uh, a lot of the troops, uh, of course, uh, they, they, it was a horrible spreader, World War One. And uh, when the war ended, those troops came back and they were, uh, you know, uh, gathered together on trains. If they didn't have it already, uh, a lot of people picked it up on trains. And as they were getting dropped off at different parts of the country, uh, they did an absolute, you know, it was uh, uh, they just spread uh, they, they spread the virus around, which is uh, the reason why I asked you before we uh, came on the show about uh, uh, Toronto and is the subway going and you're seeing an issue 
issue in New York where literally half the problem, uh, half the current issue is uh, centered around the New York metropolitan area. Uh, they did not address mass transit and uh, it's uh, it's been a huge spreader and you're not seeing any instances in the states nearly as bad as you're seeing in the New York metro area, uh, basically because there's no other part of the U.S. or uh, anywhere in North America, as far as I know, that is as uh, reliant on mass transit as uh, as Manhattan, the New York metropolitan area. It's just, uh, I don't know how much time uh, you spend in New York, but it's just not... Uh, it's not practical it's not practical to drive in them in manhattan you know you take the subway you take maybe if you have a few more bucks or if you have a few people chipping in uh to get around town uh, you you take a cab but uh it's it's sort of the great equalizer and uh, it's uh you know again uh roughly uh six and change percent of the u.s population is half the u.s problem it's uh you know it's a, a bad job and you were talking a little bit earlier about the media and uh, oh my goodness gracious you know uh, you've got the uh uh, this uh, governor from New York, Cuomo, who's being uh, hailed as a hero when uh, he was uh, the, the 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 biggest villain in all this, as far as I'm concerned. You know, six and a half percent of the population is 50 percent of the problem. And uh, none of the governors have addressed mass transit uh, uh, to any great extent. Uh, uh, they're coming along a little bit slower now uh, because of the uh, uh, because of uh, the uh, uh, finally the CDC figured out that people should start wearing masks when they're out and about uh, you know, it took him a month to do that, and uh, I, I still can't figure that out. Uh, it makes no sense to me. I know that uh, I've been uh, advising friends to wear masks when they're on mass transit or uh, taking a commercial flight uh, to wear masks more than a month now. It just uh, is mind-boggling to me, and the uh, the the media coverage uh, has been horrible in so many ways. Just uh, uh, here, uh, uh, turning uh, into uh, idols, the uh, the very people who are most responsible. Uh, uh, for this issue getting out of hand here in the states, uh, uh, Cuomo and Fauci, I mean, and and they're both New York guys. It's like they they didn't even consider uh, mass transit as part of the issue. And uh, just uh, wondering what you're seeing up there. If you're getting much U.S. media, or it's uh, basically CBC, or you're not looking at it at all, or what's uh, what's the case with that? Well, you know, Frank. I, again, I'm sorry. I just don't trust anything that anybody tells me. So. You know, they say that there's a big cluster of coronavirus in New York. Says who? You know, we've we've seen online. There's lots of videos of people going to the local hospital, and it turns out they're empty. Well, there's yeah, yeah, because uh, there there are local hospitals uh, not in the New York City area. They did uh, uh, there uh, there was uh, you know clearing out hospitals of non-essential patients in expectation uh, that uh, things would get uh, really bad everywhere. When that was not the case, that did not happen. It's uh, exactly. basically gotten it's gotten horrible in uh, two spots in this country. One in New Orleans, where uh, uh, they uh, they let the Mardi Gras go, and uh, again they're pretty reliant on mass transit down there, and who in the New York metro area. Who told you it got bad in New Orleans? Uh, it's gotten bad in, uh, in New Orleans. Yeah, people you know, are dying where, down where there. Where did the information come from? Well, it uh, it did come from the media, and uh, they're not lying about everything. No, the media lies about everything. Let's get one thing straight. First of all, every one of these politicians, the governor, the, that lunatic bitch there in, in, in uh, Michigan telling people what they can buy at the store, and then the Cuomo lunatic, they're all psychopaths. They're, they don't get to be mayor or governor or president without being a psychopath. That's the way the system works here. So they're all compulsive liars and psychopaths. So anything that they say or do, why would you give it the least bit of cred credence? And then the media, that's all the media does is lie. And uh, even going back to the, the Spanish flu, I don't buy the Spanish flu either. That was all lies as well. It didn't originate in Spain. It ori originated in the United States. It did. It, it did. Yeah. The reason it's called the Spanish flu, and I think uh, most everyone acknowledges this the, uh, from what I've seen, is that uh, uh, the Spanish uh, were not involved in World War One, so they didn't have uh, informational lockdown, and they were actually able to report uh, uh, numbers and uh, results and so on, honestly. Sure. That's the reason why that uh, uh, that name came about. And also, all these troops that got sick, they also had vaccines. 
They were all vaccinated when they came back from the war. And then suddenly this this, this uh, pandemic breaks out. You know, I, I'm suspicious about everything. And the reason I'm suspicious is because I know who runs this world and runs every facet of it, including the media. They run the politics. They run the schools. They run the medical program. They, they, they run what they teach the medical doctors. <clears throat> they run the pharmaceuticals. They run everything. And I know what kind of people they are. So I wouldn't believe a word that comes out of their mouths. So the Spanish flu, <clears throat> you know, is it, you know, I don't even believe that was a real thing. I think that was orchestrated, just like this coronavirus is orchestrated. Now, very well may be, you know, I'm perfectly open to the idea that there is a bad flu virus going around and and people that get it you get sick you know i had the flu once oh, about 10 years ago put me on my ass for t 10 days you know yeah yeah oh but, yeah i'm 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 convinced of that again uh, yeah okay uh, for, uh, uh well uh, let me uh i agree with you on that particular point uh, obviously we disagree on a few things which is uh, which is great western civilization i mean people aren't even allowed to walk in the park that is ridiculous. That is, is that ridiculous. Is correct reaction no, no, for this not. type of thing? Of course not. So why are they doing that? They're doing that because this is the opportunity for all the psychopaths and powers and, and for all the people that stand to profit from this, especially Bill Gates, that psychopathic demon, uh, why his head isn't on, stuck on the top of a pole, I have no idea. But... This is an opportunity for all these sons of bitches to make a lot of money, and they make more money the more they lie to us and the more they freak out. Do you think this is a reasonable response to nobody being sick in the small town and, and the hospitals are empty? Look, I've read the hi historical accounts of things like the Black Plague and, and typhoid and cholera, and when those pandemics hit, there were piles of bodies in the streets. They couldn't find a place to bury them all, even in mass graves. Do you see piles of bodies in the streets? I don't. Uh, uh, not, not in the streets, but uh, the, there have been uh, some uh, mass grave openings. Uh, there was some uh, video of that, some overhead That's video taken. That was yeah, it, all right. All right. I'll, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to check out that that debunking. Yeah, uh, but okay. okay. Uh, you know. Yeah, I, I don't mean to, you know, be, be a hard case on this, but ultimately everything we know comes either from the government or the media. And I trust neither, neither of them because they all have vested interests in profiting off of our misery. And even if it was all true, which I don't believe a word of it, but even if it was, that is no justification for shutting down the entire Western civilization. There's no justification for that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll, I'll go uh, a little bit. I'll run this by you and uh, get your feedback on it. But uh, you're, you're seeing this kind of uh, this uh, mass shutdown, uh, this uh, uh, this sort of thing. And what you're really seeing is uh, just plain incompetence from uh, from these psychopaths. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, 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 I fully agree with you on that point. Uh, psych no, at I the very least, narcissists. But they're, no, they're not... I, I got to tell you. Okay, okay. The fallback position for psychopaths is to pretend to be stupid. They do this all the time. It's like that, you know, in, in, in the George Costanza uh, uh, episode there on uh, Seinfeld where he's caught banging the cleaning lady on his desk and he, he's called into the, the boss and the boss says, is it true you were banging the cleaning lady on the desk? And George Costanza says, uh, yeah, is that wrong? Is that yeah. wrong? Because yeah. if, I, if I thought that was wrong, I wouldn't have done that. But, Listen, they always plead stupidity. They're not stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. This is not because of incompetence. This is because of a well-thought-out plan that's been in the work for 20 years, if not longer. It's not stupidity. They know exactly what they're doing, and what they're doing is imposing a totalitarian police state on the entire Western world on the basis of a common cold.
Well, I will say uh, this as far as uh, uh, getting back to Cuomo, who is somebody who I'm uh, pretty critical of. In a recent uh, interview with Rolling Stone, he said that they didn't have a roadmap, that uh, uh, they didn't know what was coming. When, in fact, uh, you know, we have dealt with this kind of thing before. Like I was talking about 1917, 1918, uh, also uh, the earlier uh, the, the SARS epidemic. So, uh, you know, even if uh, you accept him uh, speaking from his reality and uh, you disagree with uh, uh, what uh, uh, what happened there and don't think there was that much to it, uh, then uh, even uh, within his th- uh, within his uh, framework, the the kind of uh, uh, narrative that he has to stick by, uh, then he should have known about that and should have been aware of it. He was aware of it. He was told about the plan. He knows the party has to play. Nothing this person says has a smidgen of truth to it. Um, oh, we were cut off. I'll give me a break. These guys knew exactly. They were all briefed on it. Many many months, if not years ago. They know exactly how it was going to come down. They knew exactly they were going to shut down everything and social distancing and all this nonsense. They they knew all of this ahead of time. You know, it's not a conspiracy. They they did, you know, check out the Bill Gates uh, um, 201 drill that they did last year where they laid it out step by step exactly what's happening now and that was last year but even going back even further there were documents written back in uh, you know at least 20 30 years ago where they were speculating about this you know how can we take down the civilization well you know what this is is george orwell's war of the worlds you know back in 1938 george or uh, um not george orwell um H.G. Wells. H, no, yeah, H.G. Wells is the... Uh, War Orson, of the Worlds. Oh, or, okay, Orson okay. Wells did a radio broadcast based on the H.G. Wells story, War of the Worlds, and uh, he broadcasted it in New Jersey in 1938, and they they did like a play, uh, a skit, where the aliens have landed and they're you know, destroying everything. Most people bought it. Most people believed it. Now we've got every media, radio, TV, movie stars, politicians. Uh, they're on TV. Oh, the coronavirus, the coronavirus. And uh, so, oh, well, it's got to be real now. It's no more real than the Martians landing in New Jersey in 1938. They've just figured out how to fine-tune their propaganda and their manipulation of the masses. You know, we we got to be skeptical of everything that comes to us because most of it is lies. You know, unfortunately, everything we've been taught since childhood is pretty much a lie. Just about everything. World War II wasn't the good war. You know, no American soldier died for freedom because America was never at risk, ever, ever. So all these wars that all these Americans shed their blood for was for nothing it was all pointless. I know it's terrible. A lot of people are going to get angry at me. Oh, my grandfather died for this. No, he didn't die for that. He died for the bankers, and he died for the psychopaths that run this world. He didn't die to free America. Nobody died to free America since 1776. You know, it's all been a lie. Education doesn't teach you. Schools are not there to make you smart. Colleges don't educate you above a, a, a high school level. All of it has been a lie. Doctors don't cure diseases. The media doesn't tell you the truth. I mean, it, it goes on and on. It's been one big lie, Frank, our whole lives, you know. And we should all be really angry about it because while we were being lied to, our, 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 the real life, the, the, the energy, the love, the, the community, the family, all of that's been stolen from us and we're left with porn and and crap and 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 and, and oxy content epidemic and alcoholism and unemployment and masses of cases of suicide well why because our souls have been poisoned and destroyed after a hundred years of lies so now they're coming out with more lies oh the virus and we have to do this and now everybody has to be unemployed but don't worry we're going to kick you in a couple hundred bucks but it won't be enough to pay your pay your mortgage so you'll be homeless you know come on frank it's just more lies more lies to you know to fleece us but it's not just our money they're stealing <clears throat> it's our souls it's our culture it's our history it's life itself. They are destroying 
the, our very lives. I mean, it's, it's spring. I'm not allowed to go to the park. I can't go outside. The police will find me $1,000 if I go for a walk in the park. You think that is a normal relax, reaction to what's going on now? No, no, no. Especially, especially, especially uh, with the, the situation that's uh, up in Canada where it's uh, not terribly severe. Uh, oh, at least. Of course I mean, they said last count, what, what was it? You know, 17 people died. What? You know what? More people die in drive-by shootings in our ghetto on a weekend than have died from the whole coronavirus since it began. So if that's enough to shut down all of Canada, how come we didn't shut down all of Canada with all these drive-by shootings last year? Killed more people than corona. You know, street crime kills more people. I mean, people die from falling in their bathtubs and breaking their necks more than this coronavirus. But that hasn't stopped Justin Trudeau and, 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 all the prime minister uh, premiers from shutting down the entire country. There are businesses that are shut down. I, I drive through the town, and everything is closed, and they will never come back, Frank. Yeah, some, of some of them won't. Some of them won't. And uh, this no. is what happens. Uh, uh, what what happens is uh, uh, ten years ago we had the uh, economic collapse, and uh, yeah, a lot of businesses didn't come back. Uh, a lot of times it'll be uh, uh, older business owners who uh, you know they, they figure this is uh, this is kind of the push. It's uh, it's time to shut things down, so they won't be back. Uh, that that is true. Uh, uh, there's going to be some shakeout, uh, but that's also going to present. Uh, some opportunity for someone else to either buy that business or to start a new one. Uh, uh, you know, basically uh, just part of the uh, the normal uh, the living and dying cycle that uh, is going to take place in any business, though. No, no, I don't think so this time, Frank. I really don't. I mean, the economic economic uh, recession there. What was it? Two thousand and eight. Yeah, late, fourth quarter two thousand eight, and then really two thousand nine was the really bad year. Yeah, it was bad, but most people still had their jobs, you know. Yeah, I worked I worked through it, but business was off. Let me tell you something. Business was way off. But uh, let sure. me tell you yeah, let me tell you something though. Uh that particular year I had my highest uh, uh dollar amount uh, uh, per sale average that year and you know why? It shouldn't be that yeah. difficult to figure out. Uh, it was uh, because uh, the people who were still buying were the ones who had money. Mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was the little guy not buying, uh, but the big guys who had, uh, you know, handled their money, they had stockpiled cash, they weren't uh, uh, going uh, week to week, paycheck to paycheck uh, to, uh, you know, stockpile cash. They right. had the money, so they were doing the buying, and they probably got some pretty yep. good deals uh, during that time frame as well. Yeah, yeah. I think this time it's different, though. This time it's going to be far worse than anything we've imagined. Um, so you were asking about, you know, self-defense against this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Dollars matter. Cash is king. And, uh, the reason I asked you on this show was, uh, I was listening to a, a zoom conference that uh, you had put together with a friend of yours up in Canada that uh, I thought was pretty interesting. I thought, yeah, uh, Stefan's uh, going to have some very interesting, very different perspectives on all this. So yeah, I want to get him back on it. Uh, and, uh, you were nice enough to do it right away, but uh, you're yeah. super now, Frank, aren't What's you? That? No, 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 no. The debate is good. Debate is a, a a good thing, you know. A lot of times we do have guests that uh, I think uh, maybe agree with me a little bit too much, and it gets uh, uh, you know a little bit uh, uh, not too debatey. But no, uh, debate is good, and debate is important, and freedom of speech. I stand behind it a hundred percent. You know, Frank, I'm not disagreeing with you. What I disagree with is the sources of the information. You know, well, it's again, now uh, I wouldn't say that. You see, I, I don't think the powers that be are competent enough uh, to put together this kind of thing that well without, uh, you know, I just don't think they can do it. And you know that I'm a UFO buff and, uh, you know, that uh, all of this, uh, all the, this uh, flying saucer stuff is uh, all disinformation going back to the late 40s. There are some people who have that opinion that none of it, it's all just a cover for, uh, uh, you know, a U.S. secret military projects going back that far. And again, I, I do tend, I, I believe the, uh, the direct witnesses, you know, I'm a big believer in, uh, in that type of thing. And uh, when a, a friend of mine, a guy who's been on this show is saying, look, uh, I've got this bug and it's not like a normal flu. It's not like a normal cold. It's different. It's heavy duty. I'm, uh, this thing kicked my ass. You know, I believe this guy. He's not, uh, there's, there's no way in hell that this guy is a, a part of uh, any kind of no, a, no, a he's government not conspiracy. I don't, yeah. I don't believe he's lying to you. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not questioning him. 
<clears throat> he's, he's sick. I got a, I got a couple of friends that are really sick. They've been sick for a month too. What I'm questioning is, is it the coronavirus? Or are they sick from some other cause? And they don't know, and their doctors don't know, and they may think that this is the worst flu they've ever had, but how much of that is affected by all the negative publicity? Remember, the placebo effect has both positive and negative capability. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree right? with that. Yep. So, um, you know, I've seen this with, with, when I was teaching kids, you know. Yeah, if a kid tripped and fell on the, in the dojo, and I looked at him and said, come on, get up, keep going. He'd get up and keep going. But if the mother was there and immediately ran up and said, oh, poor baby, are you okay? That kid would burst into tears. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, your perception of pain and uh, your perception of everything in life is determined to a large degree on what your expectation is. It's called inference. So if you feel sick, and now the media is screaming, every media channel, papers, newspapers, TV, they're all telling you, oh, it's this pandemic. Well, are you going to feel better or worse after hearing all that? Of course, you're going to think, my, my God, I must have this. I, I feel a lot worse now. But it could be the placebo effect. I mean, this is making people sick. And then it's making them sicker by hyping it up and, and, and doing all this fear mongering. I mean, we can't. The problem with science is we can't separate very clearly what is real and what is imagined, since both have a very powerful effect on the body. And uh, have why. you have you ever seen that uh, placebo uh, documentary? It was very really interesting. Where uh, 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 hopefully we're talking about the same one. Where uh, yes. uh, this one fellow, uh, this one doctor, was actually performing phantom surgeries on people. Yes, that's to the see one. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the, the one. Surgery, where, yeah. Knee. There, there was a guy who was hobbling around, limping around, and uh, they performed this. They, they didn't perform any surgery. They acted as if uh, they were putting him through surgery. And uh, the the guy uh, uh, afterwards, hey, my knees never felt better, and they never did anything to the guy. They never cut the guy. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and they were they went so far as to even play a fake video of the endoscope looking into the knee, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember that part, but yeah, I yeah. don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Yeah, but now, uh, yeah. That, oh yeah, your your attitude uh, goes a long way towards that. My attitude has always been, you know, again, I, I want to stress this to the listeners at home that uh, you know protect yourself at all times, uh, sure. even uh, even against uh, uh, even even if it's uh, just uh, you know uh, the the regular flu. Uh, do what you have to do to uh, to keep yourself from getting sick in any way, shape, or form, and stay out of hospitals, and you know keep yeah. yourself well enough to not have to get checked in. And uh, oh my god, and uh, the little nicks and dings that I got from. You know, from playing hockey back in the day, uh, you know, I, I could have easily found uh, some surgeon to cut me and uh, get rid of this bit of scar yeah. tissue and that yeah. one. But, uh, yeah. you know, I chose to just uh, work it out myself and just break it all up myself and not not even bother with any of that. It just, uh, you know, it, it not knock wood for me. It has not happened that often. But uh, uh, maybe it's like a once a decade thing where I'll pick up a cold or a flu and get uh, and uh, get sick from it to the point where, you know, I got to uh, I got to rest up for a little bit and recover. But uh, yeah. I think a lot of that is, again, the attitude. I'm not going to get sick. And, you know, once in a while, uh, uh, like I said, uh, once a decade, I've let my guard down. And, yeah, it got me. And it's like, okay, well, you got me. Okay. So, you know, now I'm going to get myself better and uh, learn from my mistake and uh, get back to it. Well, you know, uh, listen, I'm not saying don't take precautions. Absolutely. It's, uh, I do it all the time anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you know, it's healthy, clean, smart living, you know. <clears throat> but what I, you brought up the, uh, the documentary, the placebo effect. Now, there was another part of that documentary where the doctor who was being interviewed said he felt really bad about this because he had a patient come in and they did the tests and sure enough, uh, the patient had cancer and according to what they're taught in their, in their pseudo medical schools, um, the doctor told him, he said, well, you know, uh, you probably have six weeks left to live. And sure enough, six weeks later, he was dead. Now, the thing that happened was they did an autopsy. And again, you can't determine the cause of death unless you do an autopsy. And so when they come out with these statistics, so many thousands have died, they're lying. They didn't do autopsies on him. Now, they did an autopsy on this guy. But they assumed he died from the cancer. 
The test came back. He's positive for cancer. The doctor told him he had six weeks. Sure enough, six weeks later, he's dead. So they did an autopsy on him. And, yep, sure enough, they found a tumor. He said the tumor was the size of a pea. It could not possibly have killed him. So what killed him? Well, the doctor told him he was going to die. And so the placebo effect can heal you and it can also kill you. And this is why I'm really upset with the way the media is covering this, because it's fear mongering. It's the equivalent to yelling fire in a crowded theater, because now everybody's being onion dated with this. Oh, the pandemic, the pandemic. That very fact is already contributing to people getting sick based on the placebo effect. So that's why I say I don't know if I believe it. You know, um, the, the the brain and the mind is a powerful thing. It can be used to to heal yourself. You know, um, you can get over a lot of these diseases if you use visualization and uh, and a healthy positive approach. And as we've seen in that mo the documentary, it can also kill you. That's how you know the old voodoo curses used to work. You know, the witch doctor, and they did studies on that. And it turns out, well, you know, when they studied these people in, in, in Africa and the witch doctor put a curse on you, sure enough, they would die. Well, why did they die? Um, well, because of the placebo effect. They all believed it. it was part of their culture. They believed the witch doctor had the power to curse you. And they believed that if you were cursed, you would die. And they believed it so much that they would die. So, again, th this example of, of the placebo effect uh, goes way back. I mean, I remember reading about the, the witch doctors and their curses back in the 70s. They already knew this, that it was the power of the mind to, that killed them. So, you know, when, when now we get all these evil entities, you know, the government, the media, the, the, the health organizations, and they're all, you know, running around screaming, death, death, dozens of bodies, Mass graves. Oh, come on, you bastards. You bastards. Even if it was true, you're contributing to the death toll just by running around screaming about it. Now, uh, one guy I want to ask you about, and he, uh, I didn't bring him up, uh, and as far as I know, I don't know if you've addressed this guy's work at all. But uh, this is a fellow who is also engaged in uh, uh, some uh, Eastern uh, uh, thinking and is a practitioner of uh, uh, Tumo meditation. And that's a guy named Wim Hof. And I was wondering if you're familiar at all with his work. No, sorry, never, never. Heard oh, okay. Of then, then I won't go into it too much. But basically, he's a, a very interesting guy, and uh, through uh, Tomo meditation, uh, this uh, this kind of uh, vase breathing, uh, he says uh, he can. Uh, and he's done this in labs. Uh, uh, be injected uh, with uh, bacteria and uh, fight yeah. that off. That he can uh, uh, mentally control his own immune system and uh, fight off this bacteria. I, he's. I, He's uh, he's uh, climbed Mount Everest uh, in his shorts. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, run half marathons in uh, uh, sub freezing weather. Swims under ice uh, just because of his uh, own ability to uh, control his body. And uh, he's made some claims about uh, this particular virus. How uh, you know? Uh, uh, go ahead and inject me with it. It's not going to have any effect. I, I'll basically yep. uh, control enough of my immune system to fight it off and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with him, a uh, uh, very interesting guy. I thought yeah, you might. Not Know a little bit about him, but it's Wim W I M, uh, and then H O F Wim Hof. He's a, he's a Dutchman, and uh, oh, and, I know the guy. Yeah, oh, you know who the guy is now. Okay, back. okay, yeah, yeah. He's a pretty interesting guy, and uh, yeah. uh, really, uh, I think uh, the core. Uh, one thing uh, that, that we can both uh, agree on is sort of uh, take control of your own uh, uh, attitude, your own uh, your own health. Uh, understood that? Uh, yeah, not everybody is in that position. Some people uh, uh, do get uh, plagued by things that are outside their control and that sort of thing happens. But I think for most of us, uh, we've got a lot more control over ourselves and uh, over our thinking and our attitude and our health than uh, we really uh, uh, they really give ourselves uh, credit for. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that I probably have never been to a medical doctor aside from a, a dentist and an eye doctor uh, in my entire adult life. And yeah, I, I, I plan on keeping it that way. So uh, yeah. even though we uh, we disagreed on uh, quite a few things that uh, I think uh, 
Basically, uh, people should uh, come away with being skeptical of everything. And I, I agree about uh, being skeptical of the media. You know, obviously, it's uh, uh, here in the States. And uh, I would say that uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of uh, either of the major parties. But, yeah, there's no question that uh, uh, the, the, the spin goes uh, the, the way of the uh, Democrats here in the States. Uh, I've got a graphic yeah. up right now of uh, cases or, excuse me, uh, deaths per 10 million in the United States. Uh, uh, this day is a little bit old, but you can see at least uh, uh, the first several states that uh, that reached that point uh, were in fact uh, uh, governed by uh, Democrats. And uh, uh, and I'll also give credit uh, to the uh, uh, the Democrat in Washington, uh, Governor Inslee, uh, where the first outbreak took place. He did a pretty good job of keeping that uh, under grips. And uh, also uh, uh, in uh, California, the most populous state in the country, again governed by a Democrat, uh, he's done a pretty good job there. Really, uh, the catastrophe was in New York, and uh, the fact that uh, uh, this uh, this Governor Cuomo, I think, is largely responsible for it, and the spread outward from New York City, and uh, the, the fact that this guy is getting hailed as a hero when he did literally everything wrong, everything wrong, uh, as far as uh, trying to manage this, uh, and uh, the, the fact that this guy is getting praised as a hero, not surprisingly, you know, he's a Democrat, his brother hosts a show on CNN, and... And uh, the, the, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but of course he's rather the the brother uh, uh, Chris Cuomo is rather famously <laughs> tested positive, and uh, you know uh, doing his show from his basement, you know in uh, uh, in uh, in quarantine. Uh, yet uh, over the weekend he was spotted uh, publicly uh, outside his uh, new construction on his home out on Long Island, <laughs> walking around, uh, you know, no mask, uh, with his wife, with his kids, uh, with some uh, some other woman uh, uh, surveying yeah. his. Uh, the site of his new uh, uh, his new abode, you know, his new uh, mansion out on the island, you know. It's a fraud. And uh, and again, the the same thing apparently with the with your guy Trudeau, uh, the the prime minister up there. Yeah, uh, going off to his uh, uh, vacation cottage on the weekend. Everybody else has to stay locked in, yet he's doing that. So you know. Yeah, we have this this talentless little twerp who never worked a real job in his life, never worked never accomplished anything and he's on camera going enough is enough now and then so everybody has to stay home and then he goes off on vacation to his cottage you know you you son of a bitch you know right, it's right. A hypocrisy. The, the ultimate hypocr- yeah hypocrisy exactly exactly and but, uh, also but, they're not worried are they they're not worried about oh his wife supposedly have it uh, well, she looks pretty healthy. They're yeah. all having fun there up at the cottage. Yeah. I thought she had coronavirus. Should she be mingling with everybody? Should she be mingling with the Prime Minister of Canada? What if he gets it? Oh, please. They don't take any precautions. Nothing. They stand there in front of the camera and tell everybody to lock themselves in the bedroom. They can't go outside. They can't go shopping. They can't go to their job. They can't earn a living. They can't pay the rent. They can't pay the mortgage. They can't get groceries. But he can go traveling around on Easter weekend. You know, you think these people think this is real? They know it's not real. If they thought it was real, would they be behaving like that? Uh-huh. And it's not just, you know, Cuomo there in New York. It's it's all of them. You know, uh, you know, every time you see the cops arresting somebody and finding them a thousand bucks for taking a walk along a deserted beach, are the cops wearing masks? Are, do they have rubber gloves on? Are they staying three uh, yards away? Come on, none of them are doing that. You know, it's ridiculous. The rest of us have to be put down into lockdown, the equivalent of complete and total martial law, you know, but not the cops and not the politicians and not the celebrities. They can all run around and do whatever the hell they want. And now I have to believe it's all real. I don't. I don't believe it's real. That's all I'm saying. Frank, you know, I'm just... (laughs) <laughs> that, 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 that is a pre- that is a pretty fair point uh, towards your argument. Uh, no doubt about that. I, I won't argue with that. But, uh, uh, yeah, there you're seeing uh, a lot of hypocrisy. A lot of hypocrisy uh, on, in that regard. And uh, also, I don't know if you picked up on this, but uh, there was uh, uh, quite the demonstration uh, outside the uh, state capitol in uh, Lansing, Michigan. Uh, That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. As, as far as that goes. And, uh, you know, people are, people are ready to get back to it. And I think we will, which is why we're, we're not. Uh, another uh, another uh, good thing is that the economy was going really well. Uh, you know, biz- my business was booming, uh, you know, in terms of the, the company that I work for. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm down now, just like a lot of other people. But, uh, you know, and 
uh, I, I prepare for this. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, a subsidized vacation. So I'm, sure, not, sure. I'm not personally concerned. But, yeah, I am concerned for other people. Sure. And, uh, yeah, there's too many people probably who are out there living paycheck to paycheck and, you know, just expecting that uh, there's never going to be a rainy day. And uh, regardless of uh, what you think is going on today, it's raining out there. So, you yeah. know, it's raining yeah. out there. So, uh, Stefan, I really appreciate it. Now, uh, before, uh, you know, there, there's no uh, there's no time limit here. Uh, you got anything uh, that you want to add before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, look, folks, this is serious. This is it's not going to get better. The, we're like on the Titanic and we've hit the iceberg and we're taking on water. Now, we haven't sunk yet. It doesn't mean we won't because we've been de delivered a fatal blow to our economy. I mean, you know, shutting down the entire world for three months. This has been going on a lot longer than uh, people remember. Uh, you know, already in the, the social distancing started in January. And now they keep saying another month, another month, maybe 18 months, maybe two years. There's no sign that the slightest hint that they're going to lighten up on this and this will destroy our economy and we'll see a collapse i believe we're going to see a collapse of the dollar i'm going to see, i believe uh, even now look at what's happening with the farmers you know crops are rotting in the fields they're slaughtering their I've cattle seen some of that yeah you know they're they're flushing millions of gallons of milk down the drain because you know nobody's buying it you know they're starting to choke the food supply and my study of history, when you have the Bolsheviks in power, and that's who controls the Western society, it's the Bolsheviks, it's the communists, it's the Marxists, it's the leftists, they are in charge. And what they always do, everywhere they've taken over, they did it in Russia, they did it in the Ukraine, they did it in Germany after World War II, they did it in China. Their number one favorite tactic is famine. They institute an artificial famine. They starve people to death. And once people are too hungry to think, too hungry to organize, too hungry to fight back, that's when they clamp down. And that's where we're going. So I'm, I'm telling you people, this, is, this really is shit hit the fan. Um, we might have a couple of months as the you know, lower uh, decks flood on the Titanic. And we're seeing that now the lower flood decks are flooding, you know, the waitresses and, and the stewardesses and, and the chefs and the delivery people, they're all done. OK, uh, their jobs are gone, not coming back. So the lower decks are flooding. It'll eventually reach us and the whole sink, ship will sink. We might have a month, two months. Stock up on food. They will starve us. That's what they're doing every indication you know they're they're messing with the truckers they're messing with the farmers they're messing with our ability to you can't even buy seeds to grow your own garden anymore well that's happening in michigan that, that, that's happening in michigan that i'm aware of i well, don't it's know happening what's going here on in ontario too because is it really? i can't okay. go to the garden store because the garden store is closed oh. Oh. i can't go to the hardware store and yesterday we i went out with my buddy we were we went to get a case of beer, and on the way back, he said, oh, I need to get some glue. We, we went by the, the, the hardware store. There's a guy standing there in the parking lot. He's waving at us. My buddy says, what the hell is this going on here? So we pull up, roll down the window, and the guy says, we're closed. <clears throat> you can order online, and two days later, we'll drop it out on the sidewalk in front of you, and you can pick it up. And that's the same with the garden centers and the hardware stores. Everything except the grocery store and the liquor store is closed. Uh -huh. So you can't even grow a garden this summer, and it's planting season now. you got to be out there planting, you know, this month. That's it. And they've closed it down. Do you think they aren't planning on starving us out? I have friends that drive truck, okay? And already the, 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 the hassle the truck drivers are getting – you know, even when they pull up to drop their load off at, at, at uh, Walmart or Costco or something like that, there's already people breaking into the back of the truck and looting it before they've even backed it up to the loading ramp. They park their truck at a, at a, at a truck stop. They're getting looted. 
And not only that, they're closing down all these places where truckers can spend the night. There's nowhere for them to stop the truck and sleep. They're not, you know, they're closing it down one by one. The truck stops are closing and uh, they're not allowed to use the bathrooms at the truck stops. You know, this, there's tens of thousands of truck drivers that deliver everything that we buy in a store sure. and they're messing with them. So look, this is my prediction. And and people have been writing me and said, oh, you know, l lately I've been <coughs> inundated with emails from people saying, oh, you were right, you were right. You know, it's it's not that I want to be right about things. It's just that I do see the patterns in history. I've read what happened in the past. And when I see it go exactly ABC in, in 1930, and now I see it going ABC here, it's it's easy to predict. It's not It's not some... You know, psychic ability to see the future, it's the ability to see a similar pattern play out. And they're going to starve us. So we have got to get to your listeners. I'm serious now. You need at least six months supply of food. Go out every day, buy a little bit extra, a little bit extra. I've been doing this since January. Like, I'm okay, Frank, you know, because in January, when they first started talking about the Wuhan virus, that perked up my ears because I'll tell you why. I know they were going to do something. And the reason they're going to do something is the good guys have been winning lately. We had Brexit. We had Trump. We have more people aware of the central bankers and the evil that the, the, the central bankers do, the Rothschilds and the Federal Reserve. More people are aware of that now than have ever been aware of it in history. And, you know, we have the, the separatist movements and the protest, the Hong Kong protest, the, the, uh, the Paris to France protests, the Brexit. People are getting sick of this totalitarian government regime that we run under that's run by the bankers. And they're starting to act up. And I knew they are going to shut us down because this is the biggest threat all these lunatics have ever faced. Because before the, the Internet, before we all, you know, figured this out. You wouldn't find this information. You can't go to the library and, and take out a book that's going to explain the Federal Reserve to you. You know, those books weren't stocked in the library. You'd have to go to a special, you know, mail order company. Yep. You yep. know, back in the you day, couldn't that's buy how you it had online. To it. You couldn't go to the library. You couldn't go to the bookstore to buy it. You know, nobody knew about this stuff except a very small group of people that were in the, you know, conspiracy community at that time. Now, most people know about it. Everybody knows about it. So now they're scared. They've shut it down. And now they're really going to clamp down like no tomorrow. And uh, like I said, famine is what they have used traditionally in the past. And it's really easy. All you have to do is block off a couple of choke points. You know, stop the truckers from delivering groceries for a week. And guess what's going to happen? They're already boarding up the windows right? In New York, right? They're already boarding up the windows in France. They're, everybody's already boarding up the goddamn windows. Why? Because they know people are going to be riding in the streets when the food runs out. They've already been moving in the National Guard there in the States. We've seen lots of videos of, you know, the, the Humvees and the, and the tanks and everything rolling down the street there in New York. They've done the same thing here in Canada. They've mobilized the army. They're all stationed in Camp Borden, just outside of Toronto, to help with the virus. What do you mean? What's the army going to do? Help with the? Are they going to shoot the virus? Have we got snipers on the roof ready to shoot the virus? <laughs> Come on, what the hell's the army got to do with the goddamn virus? No, the army is here because they know another two weeks, another month, the food will run out. They're already boarding up all the windows. They know people are going to lose it and they're going to riot and start breaking into every store and restaurant they can looking for food or booze or whatever they can get their hold on. And we've already got the National Guard and the Army here in Canada. Everybody's raring to go. So what, what do you think is going to happen, folks? Get some food together. So when I heard about the Wuhan, I started buying extra food. Every time I went to the store, which was every other day, I put an extra 10 bucks down, whatever it was on sale. You know, canned corn, five for five bucks, done. I buy five for cans. Uh, you know, uh, spam on sale for three bucks a can, good. Yeah, you, you want that canned stuff, uh, just in case things really hit, uh, shit uh, really hits the fan. 
and yeah. uh, you know the power grid goes down uh, because you're going to have all this frozen meat it's going to go bad on you so you're throwing That's your money right. away so i got a lot of canned food canned uh, gravy canned mushrooms canned fruits canned vegetables canned meatballs and uh, then i got a lot of staples a ton of uh, uh, pasta i got you know 30 pounds of rice I got, you know, 100 packets of cup of noodle, uh, you know, bullion cubes, you know. So over the past, like I said, I started January 1st when this came out. I I thought there was going to be something wrong. I warned all my friends and I said, look, I I don't like this. I got a bad feeling about this. Not that it's a real virus. No, I got a bad feeling that they're going to use this as an excuse to shut us all down. And uh, I told everybody, start buying extra food. Get, you know, start oiling your guns. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're allowed to have guns in Canada. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have to make, uh, keep them uh, sealed in concrete. And once every five years, the RCMP will allow you to chip it out of the concrete. They'll hand you one shell, and while six armed officers point their weapons at you, you're allowed to take one practice shot. There you go. But okay. otherwise, you're allowed to own one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm ready for this. For your listeners out there, I know, I, I've been in touch with people all through the states, North Carolina, California, Colorado. Already, a lot of the stores near them are running out of stuff, right? Running out of a lot of stuff. Now, where I live, it's a small town. We're outside the city. Our local grocery store still has just about everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've had that here, too. I mean, sometimes I haven't gotten exactly what I wanted, but exactly. uh, I've been able to get, you know, what I need. You know, not, not a problem there. I've been able to eat. I'm eating just fine. No worries there. And, uh, uh, yeah, before I let folks go, uh, I, I do want to uh, uh, tell everybody a little story about uh, oh, why I've been uh, such a proponent on masks in terms of, uh, you know, keeping yourself healthy, uh, uh, regardless of what you think about this particular virus, just in, uh, uh, just in terms of... Uh uh, you know, protecting yourself, protecting yourself at all times. And that is uh, basically uh, a little more than 20 years ago. I had a job where uh, what I uh, did uh, during the first part of the day was work on the computers. And uh, during the second part of the day was uh, manage a, a phone sales room where uh, what I what I had to do there was to basically go around to everybody's phone and uh, get on their phone and uh, basically uh, confirm the sale that they made. So uh, that's uh, what I did for uh, uh, the the evening shift, uh, four hours, and I did that for several months until I shifted over uh, to doing the, uh, the, the computer work full time. But uh, before I started, you know, I was thinking, I'm not even a germaphobe, but I was thinking to myself, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe I'm jumping around on so many, di- uh, many different people's phones, it might be a good idea to wear a mask. But, you know, I didn't at first, but I'm telling you, uh, within the first week, I felt uh, like a sore throat, something in the back of my throat didn't get me sick. But I'm telling you, okay, yeah, I'm uh, I'm absolutely doing that uh, when uh, you know I'm picking up a mask, and uh, so long as I uh, had that particular uh, position with the company, I uh, wore that mask whenever I got on somebody's phone, and I never had a problem after that. So I would strongly recommend uh, to everyone to uh, uh, you know uh, get hold of those masks, uh, protect yourself at all times. Again, uh, even if uh, you're skeptical about uh, this particular virus, I'm not, but uh, even if you are. Uh, still, uh, you know, be prepared to protect yourself at all times. And, uh, uh, you know, especially if you're in uh, dodgy situations uh, like uh, mass transit, which was uh, never properly addressed here in this country. And it's uh, part of the reason why things got so out of hand. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, uh, get those masks. I strongly recommend them. I've been doing it uh, long before the CDC started doing it. And uh, I think I'm a little bit ahead of the curve on that. That's really the bottom line, I think, even though uh, uh, we disagreed about uh, quite a lot, Stefan, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, protect yourself at all times, uh, regardless of uh, what the situation is. Uh, you can't rely on uh, the government to protect you because they're not going to do it. As a matter of fact, uh, they uh, uh, their shoddy advice and their, their shoddy management of our institutions uh, are going to get you killed if uh, you uh, if you yeah. follow what they say or uh, what uh, or ignore, uh, you know, or, or, or don't do what they uh, say not to bother with. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, you can't trust them any further than you can throw them. Uh, there's no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you, Frank. Look, take all the precautions. I do anyways. I yeah, always yeah. do. Yeah, exactly. So, and, um, 
you know, I, I stay away from people. I wash my hands. I I, I disinfect the, the doorknobs when I come home. I disinfect, you know, I wash everything before I even touch, sit down to the computer because I don't want to infect my keyboard, right? Right, right. Nothing wrong with that. What I what I object to is the panic, and the the overreach of the government based on this. I mean, it might be very well be real. Right. I don't believe it's real, but let's let's err on the side of caution. Absolutely, let's do that. Yep. Let's wear a mask. Let's wash. Let's keep the social distance. Let's do that. But let's not destroy Western civilization because no, of I, I, Yeah, I, I agree with that. Now, hopefully, uh, you know, we're, we are seeing some hopeful signs. Uh, they are, at least in uh, my home state, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, gradually, slowly uh, uh, getting back to normal. We'll, we'll see what that entails. Uh, and uh, again, uh, if you look uh, around the country and uh, some of the numbers, uh, even again, if you don't trust them entirely, I think uh, they give you a, a pretty fair picture of uh, who's done reasonably well and who's not doing uh, well at all uh, in terms of uh, the, their response to all this. And and, uh, you know, you just uh, uh, you can't really deny who uh, some of the worst performers are in terms of uh, the governors. And uh, there have been some good performers out there who've uh, taken reasonably uh, moderate steps, uh, like in Texas, which is a big state. Uh, they've uh, they've done a, a pretty reasonable job. Uh, the governor in uh, Florida, a very uh, second most po- uh, second or third most populous state, I think third most populous state uh, in the country, very populous state, uh, got a lot of criticism. Criticism from the mainstream in terms of his actions, but uh, he kind of took his time, and uh, they're not uh, uh, suffering anywhere near some of the worst effects that some other states are. So, uh, you know, uh, protect yourself at all times. Uh, there are some still some political realities. If you don't like uh, the job that your governor did in, in terms of uh, uh, protecting you, uh, in terms of uh, uh, keeping things reasonable and not overreaching in terms of uh, their powers, when uh, we've seen here in the states, you've got. 50 individual governors who do have dictatorial power in, uh, in states yeah. of emergency. And uh, some of it have uh, uh, used it wisely, and some of them have not. And uh, again, uh, you, you judge the bottom line. Uh, and again, uh, uh, no uh, no mention of uh, wearing masks. In fact, it was uh, advised, don't even bother, you know, when, uh, when that was yeah. terrible advice coming straight from the CDC. Uh, just yeah. uh, uh, the, some, some of these guys, they've got blood on their hands. Uh, people like Fauci, yes, uh, uh, people who run the CDC, uh, people like Cuomo, and to a lesser extent, uh, the governor of New Jersey, uh, they've got blood on their hands, uh, in my view. Uh, there's no question about that. Governor of Louisiana as well. Uh, so uh, uh, that, that's all I've got. Uh, uh, again, uh, Stefan, uh, uh, thanks so much for coming on. It was uh, uh, spirited at times. We're on the pay, uh, on the same page, I think, as far as, as, far as, the, as, far as the basics go. You as an individual, uh, and when I say you, I mean uh, just any, anybody who's, uh, who's listening Listening right now, you as an individual, you got to protect yourself at all times because, uh, sure. uh, to be honest with you, uh, the the government, uh, yeah, it, it can be your friend in certain circumstances. It can be your worst enemy too. Yeah, and uh, you know, for the listeners out there, uh, they should know that Frank and I have been friends for a long time. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is and, uh, these are the, I, these are the good shows. These are the fun shows when there's some back and forth and some disagreement. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, no disrespect to Frank, and I respect your opinions, and uh, I don't mean to be adversarial, but no, I think no, no, no. I I, I love it. That's what we're here common. for. We're here to debate and here to disagree, and uh, we can uh, uh, disagree without being disagreeable about it. Uh, sure, and yeah. and uh, we not, uh, and uh, we agree on a lot too. So there's that. I'm not married to my opinion, you know. <laughs> like if you disagree, I'm I'm happy with that hey, too. Uh, I, you know, I'm not going to get angry for somebody that. But uh, you know, yeah, I, I sometimes get a bit spirited. But ultimately, both Frank and I care about the people of this country. Yep. And uh, our opinions are slightly different on some things, but ultimately, what we're trying to do is make sure people are safe and sound. Uh, I think Frank believes that the virus is the greatest danger, and I believe the government is the greatest danger. Uh, I would say that's more like uh, that's more like fifty-fifty. <laughs> yeah, there we go, fifty-fifty. Okay, <laughs> and, they're, uh, they're both dangerous. And uh, I'm more I, I believe in UFOs more than I believe in this virus. <laughs> but um, so we have a good uh, we have a good back and forth. Let the listeners decide <coughs> which pieces of information they want to. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, which which uh, 
Uh, well, listen, if it gets people yeah. thinking, that's fine, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, be aware. Uh, read and react. Uh, that's uh, something I got from my old hockey playing days. You got to read and react. Every situation is different. Uh, and uh, whatever is coming at you, uh, sometimes it could be uh, somebody as uh, good as Wayne Gretzky. Sometimes it could be some scrub. Well, you know, you, uh, you play things a little differently depending on who's uh, on what's coming at you. You know, read and react. And in order to be aware, in order to read and react, you got to think. Yeah. Got to be thinking. And, um, but get a little bit extra food, folks. <laughs> <laughs> please, very good, very good. Please, please. Uh, uh, Stefan, uh, this is uh, actually a, a pretty long interview. When I do these, uh, we went uh, uh, an hour 20. Uh, I sure do appreciate your time. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of people are knocking on your door right about now, uh, looking to talk to you. So I'm uh, glad oh, yeah. you were able to, uh, glad yeah, you were able to, uh, to squeeze us in on fairly short notice. Anytime. And uh, it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. I sure do appreciate it. So uh, thanks again, everybody. Uh, uh, we're done for now. And, uh, I'm sure we'll have something else, uh, probably uh, more UFO related. Uh, that's uh, what we're here for. And, you know, it's never a bad idea to take folks' minds off uh, the terrible things uh, uh, that are going on in the world, uh, regardless of uh, uh, who's ultimately responsible. So uh, thanks again, everybody. You have a great night, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon, probably with, with some more UFO stuff. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now.